Hey everyone, today I have the Spyderco Tenacious. I got it because it was on sale and I didn't have a Spyderco knife. I was looking at the Ambitious as well, but I decided to go with the Tenacious because it was a little bit bigger knife and that's kind of what I was looking for at the time. But eventually I will buy the Ambitious. It's a thumb open with the famous Spidey hole here. Um, you can Spidey flick it. That's another great thing about the Spyderco knives is you can ba basically Spidey flick any one of them due to the hole. I know some models have the smaller hole, but it's just nice if you're a beginner a knife collector or you want to learn how to do the Spidey flick. This is a great knife to, to learn it with. It's got G10 handles. It does not come with a deep carry pocket clip, but I believe Flytanium makes some really cool deep carry pocket clips for a bunch of the Spyderco knives. Some of the things I like about this knife is again the fidgeting factor, since you can just Spidey flick it all day. And I like the pretty aggressive jimping here. And by aggressive, I mean it, it really your thumb really digs into that jimping, which is a really nice feature I like. I don't even think I'll have to do my own jimping. I don't see myself choking up on the knife since there's no choil underneath next to the blade. It locks in really well. You can actually hear it. And you can see it locks in almost, I'd say more than 50%. So it's, it's a really good lockup. It's pretty light, surprisingly light. And I believe they did some skeletonizing in there. We can take a closer look when I take it apart. It's got a, just a regular pocket clip, nothing fancy. Just really like the style. Another Spyderco I've been eyeing is the Ojimbo, but the price is up there, so I'll probably wait on a sale price. It's definitely one of the Spydercos I want to go in my collection. So some of the things I don't like about this knife is that the grain on the blade it's kind of a crooked grain and that's something I kind of I kind of noticed right away especially when the light hits it um, again I don't the camera's not really picking it up I think I might go over it and just straighten out the the grain of the blade but in the horizontal position I'm just not a fan of having empty holes on the knife. So I'm gonna try to figure out a way to fill these up, but in a in a unique way and something that kind of gives it a pop. More than likely, it'll probably be copper involved. For some reason, the blade isn't centered. And I tried tightening it and it doesn't do anything. So we'll see what I can do with that. Again, it is a China-made knife. Not saying they're garbage, but you can't expect uh, an American-made precision spider coat, but like I said, e eventually I'll get the Yojimbo and we'll see what that does, and I might even do a quick review on it. The things I'll be changing on this knife are these scales. So we're gonna go from this green. I bought some white G10 scales here, and I think it's gonna look really good since I will be etching the blade and darkening it. It's really close to the thickness of the original scales. I really won't be having to spend a lot of time thinning it out to the thickness of the old scales. So I think this is going to look really good against the, the dark etched blade and liners. And like I said, I'm going to be etching pretty much everything that's in the metal, even the hardware and the pocket clip. So now that I gave you guys a little quick run through of what I'm going to be doing with the knife, we can start taking it apart. I'm going to be using my Araya Toolkit with the T6 and the T9 fit. So let's get to it. Alright guys, so here it is all taken apart. We can see on the uh, liner lock side there's a little indent here. So I'll probably just have to recreate that on the new one. The other side's pretty flat so that'll be pretty simple to recreate. Nothing too crazy going on here. 
and then we can see now that we've taken it apart that it is skeletonized. It is a pretty light knife when it's all put together. And I wiped off the blade really quick, but there was quite a bit of grit around the uh, pivot area. Maybe that's what was keeping the blade from being centered. Now that it's all taken apart, we can uh, start customizing. So let's get to it.
All right, everyone, now that we have everything all customized, I'll just give you a quick run through of what I customized or created for this knife. I guess I'll start with the main piece here is the copper backspacer. And I decided to go just a little crazy with it, extra fancy. And I did a high polish on bottom and top with the diamond design. On the inside, I kind of space it out to get larger and larger towards the end. You won't really see this since it'll be on the inside. And I kind of skeletonized it so that it's not so heavy. I mean, it's still got a good weight to it, but it's a lot lighter than what it used to be. So that's gonna be the part that I'm really interested in seeing on the knife. And then I also did a, a little filler piece on the other side of the pocket clip. I could have eliminated the holes but the option of having it left hand carry is always a plus. So I just created a shiny copper filler. We'll see what that looks like against the white G10 handles. Again I chose the white G10 and I created just a little bit of texture here on close to the spine or the top of the knife itself just so you have something to kind of grip into when you're handling the knife. So, did that to both ends, and I also eliminated the pocket clip holes here on the top. Because I'm not a fan of tip down carry. And then I just went over the hardware pieces with some black ink. I tried etching all the hardware, but for some reason it didn't want to work. So, Again, I chose to do the black ink on the hardware pieces. You can see here on the pivot that it, it kind of had the effect that I was looking for. And then last but not least, I did stone wash on basically everything that was metal. And then the blade came out really well. I put nail polish to protect the tolerance where the washers go and on both sides. And then on the spidey hole, I did a nice little beveled polished edge on the inside. It's barely noticeable, but it's the little things that make something custom very unique. So it's got a really, a really good shine to it. So now that I walked you through what I did, I'm going to take my Araya tool bits here, the T6 and the T9, and let's start putting it together. Alright, here it is all put together with the white G10 handles and the etched blade and hardware. And it's got the copper backspacer with the diamond design on the inside. And let's see if it still functions. Functions just, just like it did before. And previously the blade wasn't centered, but now it's now it's centered and I think it was just due to the residue that was inside probably just dirty but it's nice and centered still functions really smooth the lockup is still really good unfortunately since it's white G10 it's it's gonna be pretty I'm sure it's gonna be pretty difficult to keep clean but I think I can keep it clean uh, if I just don't ever use it but that's that's not the case I'm gonna be using this and I'm really happy with the way it came out I really like the the copper with the white and the black it's just it's a really good it's a really good mix um, and like I said still functions really well I can spidey flick it all day the shiny edge on the inner spidey hole here is a subtle touch but it looks good 
let me know down below in the comments of what you guys think of the knife and if you guys would do anything different and don't forget to like and subscribe and feel free to share this video and thanks again for watching and stay tuned for my upcoming videos